Thank you for joining me. In this video, I will be making this oil painting. I normally don't get too excited about still lifes, but then this little guy jumped into the picture and changed everything. I was hoping he would land on the oranges, but unfortunately he never did. So I ended up with this reference photo, which you can download for free from my website and we can paint together. Okay, so on my palette, I have titanium white, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium red medium, and cadmium yellow medium. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix a brown color. I like using my own browns because they dry slower, but this is just gonna be a quick little painting. So if you have some burnt umber, you can just use that. So all I'm gonna do is take some of each of these and mix them together. I also mixed a few orange tones, which I color matched to my reference. So here I've just lightly sketched my composition, uh, just the outlines in uh, number two pencil, and let's get started. I'm going to start with my focal area, which is this little wedge here. And I'm just going to kind of start with a medium tone. So normally I like to work on a toned or tinted surface, that's why my palette paper is gray. That orange looks so much darker to me than it does on the palette, but I know that it's right because I already color matched it to my reference photo. The best thing to do here is just get the middle tones down and cover all of that white as quickly as possible, using the biggest brushes that you can get away with. I'm saving the areas where the darkest darks or the lightest lights will be so that I don't end up with muddy colors. Speaking of muddy colors, one thing I should mention right away that I don't specifically show in this video is that I'm constantly wiping my brushes off on a piece of paper towel. You could also use an old rag. But pretty much every time my brush completely disappears from view, I'm probably doing a quick wipe to get off the excess paint before I pick up any more color. For the brown tabletop, I'm really varying my colors and doing some spontaneous color mixing. Some areas I'm mixing in a little white and blue to make it more gray. Some areas are more black or red or even yellow. Mixing it up keeps the background more interesting without needing too much specific detail. So here I'm finally putting in the shadow, which is a black color made by mixing ultramarine blue with the burnt umber that I had mixed. The brush I'm using is dedicated to that dark color so it doesn't get muddied by any of the other colors. I really enjoyed painting this little bee. I'm using my smallest brushes. I'm using three little brushes in fact, one for the darkest color, one for the middle tones of brown and orange, and one for the yellowish white highlights. When painting something like this, I think it's important to resist the temptation to zoom in on the reference photo, if you can help it. When painting something small or far away, you want just barely enough detail where you can tell what it is, but not too much or it just won't look right. We're not looking at it under a microscope after all. Also, we just really aren't far enough along in this painting to get bogged down in details just yet. So try to keep things fast and loose at first and look at the painting as a whole. Step away and look at it from a distance every now and then. It really helps. So 
now I'm finally starting to go back in with some detail brushes. I also start to blend and soften the edges of these oranges. I'll slow it down here for a minute. On that top edge of the orange, I'm loading my brush with the highlight color and then pulling the lighter color up into that dark shadow area. Then I wipe off my brush before I pick up any more paint. This makes a nice soft edge. Another technique for a soft edge is to slightly overlap your brush strokes. So maybe you've noticed I'm not using any solvents or mediums, not even a single drop of extra oil. I wanted to show that you don't need a ton of supplies or complicated techniques to get started with oil painting. For this painting, I only used five colors and I didn't even prep my painting surface in any way other than quickly sketching out the composition beforehand. I'm painting this on Strathmore 400 series oil painting paper, but you could use any pre-prepared surface, like a store-bought canvas panel that's already been gessoed, for example. You could also paint right in your sketchbook if you have some gesso or something to seal the paper with. As for brushes, I mostly use number four and number six brushes here. They are flats and they're kind of a medium stiffness. I use a separate brush for light, medium, and dark tones. I also used a few small detail brushes in the same way, so six brushes in total. I'll have the detailed supply list in the description box if you're interested. Again, with this orange wedge, just softening those edges and refining the details. You'll notice I'm not putting in every single last detail. I'm trying to put just enough in to suggest that there's more detail. So this painting took me two hours, which is why I time-lapsed it. Let me know if you really want the real-time footage. I could try to make it available somewhere. But the point of this isn't to make you paint just like me but to give you a general idea of how I approach this painting, especially if you're new to oil painting and just not sure where to start. I'm hoping to make some actual real-time tutorials in the near future, something easy that can be done in under an hour or so, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss those. So let's talk about this small stick that I'm using. I highly recommend using one. It's amazing for giving you something to rest your hand on when you're working over wet paint. Mall sticks are especially great for larger paintings when you have to work over a big wet area and there's just nowhere to rest your hand. You don't need to go out and buy anything special for this though. This one I'm using here is kind of like what a drummer would use with a rounded end. In a pinch I've used a ruler or a yardstick. Just keep in mind that if you place your stick onto your painting, you want to make sure that the end isn't sharp. You don't want to poke a hole in it or scratch the surface. And now at this point, after I've gotten those final highlights in, I'm really just pushing paint around. Nothing I do at this point is really changing anything very much. And that's generally how I know that a painting is done. I'm mostly just softening some edges and touching up some details here and there, but when you find yourself getting to this point, it's really a good time to step back and look at it from a distance and consider the painting as a whole. You may find that it's actually done, or you may decide that one area in particular needs a little more work, like I did with this bee here. I didn't zoom in this time, but I'm just putting a few highlights on the bee and softening the edges of some of those brush strokes. And now for the final reveal. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little painting. I know I did. If you painted along with me, let me know how it turned out. You can comment below, tag me or message me on Instagram, or email me through my website. I'd love to know how it went for you. Thank you so much for watching and painting with me. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.